Hey everyone, welcome back to Open. I'm Brina Valentin, your host of Café con Leche for the next hour. Always inviting you to get social with us online, especially during these social distancing times. Uh, tweet us and follow us on Instagram at BronxNet TV or like us on Facebook at Open BronxNet Television. And of course, while you're there, you can follow me on Twitter, FB, Instagram, Insta Stories, and, and LinkedIn at Brina Valentin. So our first guest is recognized globally for her contributions as a scholar, activist, educator, author, professor, and Yoruba priestess. Throughout her life, she has focused on expanding the knowledge of the African diaspora with the community. She created the well-known Caribbean Cultural Center African Diaspora Institute, and now she's here to talk about the Creative Justice Initiative to help assure racial, social, and cultural equity within the community. Please welcome Dr. Maita Moreno Vega. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here with us. A la Puerto Rico. How is Puerto Rico treating you? Well, I'm loving it. The humanity, the neighbors, the friends. It's like home. It is home. It is home. And right now, you probably will soon be hearing wind and rain because we're expecting a small storm, a small uh -huh. hurricane. And so you'll get a flavor of what I'm going through. <laughs> well, you, you, rather, that's what you're dealing with in this particular moment, but not on a regular basis. Uh, so you've chosen to relocate in Puerto Rico. Yes, this is home base. This, this is, is home base home. now. Yes, it is. And, uh, and of course, you know, you can't help but recreate, right, in your new home base. Rather, you recreate it because uh, the initiative that we're talking about has been in existence for quite some time. So um, let's talk a little bit about where the Creative Justice Initiative was years ago versus where it is now. Well, where it was is a, cont a continuation, continuation of where it mm -hmm. is now, right? Um, the idea has always been that uh, we get less resources within our communities to grow and address the issues that systemic racism, discrimination, and uh, getting less than resources uh, create, right? And they create continuous disparity. And even though we're working people, we contribute to the taxes of the nation, we contribute to the taxes of the city and state, we continue to get under-resourced uh, in terms of all of the areas that we're in, be it education, be it health. And now what we're seeing is that this pandemic has opened up the level of disparity, right? We are right. seeing the level of discrimination. We're seeing because of the federal government uh, not addressing our communities, uh, the disparity and that more black and brown Latino people are dying right. uh, in this pandemic, right? And now, you know, there's discussion of even cutting back the kind of assistance that we, was being given and people will be homeless. People who never imagined being homeless will be homeless. So this whole disparity is also in culture, in creativity, in people who need to have voice. Right, we need programs right. like yours and major stations as well, right? Because our people need to hear what's happening and why it's happening. So when we reference creative justice, right? We're 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 are we just basically focusing on the funding that comes into institutions, or are we discussing the the fact that our stories are uh, don't hold as much relevance to be funded? That's the that's the priority that we are marginalized, our children are uh, being miseducated. You can open any book and you will not find the history of Puerto Rico. And if you open a book, you won't find the history of African America because it only starts generally uh, with enslavement and uh, placing us in a less than position. So that so, we, well, need, we need to have our stories told correctly. We need to get resources equitably from right. the funding and distribution sources. And they have to understand not only our importance and our legacy, but let's understand that we are, the demographics are indicating we're the majority population, right? So that right. we're no longer a minority in numbers. We never were in a minority, you know, my right. children, my 
students. I said, I'll fail you if you use the word minority to de designate us, right? right? So now we're the numerical majority. And how is it then that we continue to get under-resourced? And our children are still, uh, because of a government that is not functioning correctly, in cages on the borders. You know, so that we have to make these connections, and that's what creative justice is about. Right, and so creative justice um, it, it already has certain organizations attached to it and or individuals who are uh, artistic directors and or executive directors of uh, some of the organizations, some in the Bronx, right? We got Rosario Bacolón, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Charles Rice Gonzalez, Nader Martinez. And so the goal is to what? To enroll all types of organizations nationally? Well, well, well the role for the organization is to connect all uh, workers who are, are looking at African descendant traditions and histories and are working to document them, to present them to our public so that we understand, right, the history that has been denied us. But this special initiative is around really focusing on the disparity of economic resources coming into our communities. We have less institutions now, Reina, than we had 20 years ago. We had organizations across the country that were servicing our young people, that were providing direct assistance to our communities, and they no longer exist. If you look at New York City, we've lost a majority of our organizations. That Rosalba, that Charles, that the Caribbean Cultural Center with Melody Capote, and other institutions have held on is barely, right? Because you have warrior people at the forefront but we are missing the institutions that we need for our children and for our adults. Right. And right. if we do not fight for that, we lose community. And why do we lose community? Because people need a place to gather. And now with physical distancing, right, that is right. even more difficult. You know, right. children are not being children. They can't play with each other. You right. know, but when this is over, what will survive? Right, because almost mm -hmm. everybody has had to cut back on staff. They can't sustain staff or their physical space. So right. that when the world opens up again, what will we have left? So we have to deal with that now. That's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's a, you know obviously visionary thinking, which you are, <laughs> and that I admire so much. Mm -hmm. And so where are you now, though, um, so that people understand, right? Because I understand that there was a survey going around, um, and, and while you're saying this is a continuation, it seems like this is a, a, like a remobilization of this uh, initiative. So where are you, and what are we looking to share with our viewers? Well, what we have done is that we have talked to our institutions and said, where are you? And what we're finding is that on the day-to-day, -day, people are trying to figure it out, right? As we're trying to figure out living online and Zooms and everything to communicate. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that the data that we need as to where our institutions are is not there. The newspapers and news covers uh, large institutions, right? You hear the Whitney has let go so many people. The Mo MoMA has let go so many people. Nobody's saying what is happening within our communities, within our institutions. How many people are losing employment? Will these institutions survive or close? So we've developed the survey together with a cadre of national people, not only local, but the statewide, as well as national, to get a snapshot of what is happening within our communities. What are the needs and issues being addressed? And what are the services not being rendered to our communities on, uh, at the front lines? And this survey will serve as a platform to address people who are distributing resources, funds, be it right. foundations, be it corporations, be it government, to say, this is what is happening within our communities. Your surveys have excluded us, right? Have excluded organizations that are small that maybe function on 200,000 a year or 300,000 a year, or maybe a million or $2 million a year. But right. these are small institutions that do major jobs in our communities. Where right. is that our people get assistance with food, where is it with that our people get assistance with clothes, assistance filling out forms for rent and so on, 
are the small institutions that are within community. Community, so we right. We have to make sure that these institutions survive. So where can people go to fill out the survey? The survey is on creativejusticeinitiative.com and .org. And they can also, also go to my website, martamorenovega.org. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being with us here at La Puerto Rico. And stay blessed, healthy, and safe. I know you've got a hurricane on its way over there. And we're, we're, we're rooting for you over there. Stay safe. Thank you for being you. We love you. We love you too. You guys, once again, for more on Dr. Moreno uh, Vega and the Creative Justice Initiative, you can visit magdamorenovega.org and or creativejusticeinitiative.com. All right, we have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about a photo festival highlighting Latin America. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 